As a CSI, she's cool, competent, rational, and finds ways to be provocative more than just in the plunge of her neckline. She fulfills a number of archetypes. In this clip I have here, which I'm going to warm up now, uh, an inmate on appeal is representing, representing himself. And he's cross-examining Catherine on her uh, excuse me, um, on her performance in this case as he attempts to expose her flaws in her investigation as they apply specifically to her gender. So here we go. At the time you investigated the Herod murder, how long had you been employed by Las Vegas PD? 18 months. Oh, that's all? Prior to the Thomas Herod murder, you always worked under a supervisor? Yes. So this case was your first unsupervised investigation? It was my first solo case. But all my casework was reviewed by my supervisor. Well, regardless, it was in your best interest to get a conviction. I don't deal in convictions. That's by the jury. Still, worked out pretty good for you. Better than it did for me. Is that a question? Oh, I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time here. It's just, I've been in here for 18 years for something I didn't do. So all I got is time. You know, I met a drug dealer in here who knew your husband, Eddie Willows. Apparently, he was a very good customer. I heard he died. My condolences. I'm sorry, what was the question? Were you taking any drugs, legal or illegal, at the time you were processing this crime scene? No. Was it because you were pregnant? How is your daughter? How is that relevant? Oh, I'm laying a foundation. That's how we refer to it in the legal community. Now, having a child's a life-altering experience. Did your pregnancy influence your judgment? No. So your condition didn't impose any, any limits to the chemicals you could use in processing the crime scene? No, all the evidence I collected was bagged and tagged, and all the tests were conducted by the experts. And then there's Sarah Seidel, emotionally troubled, socially flawed, in love with her mentor. First, it appeared unrequited, and then a mutual affection. Not perfect office behavior, but not entirely unrealistic either. Both Sarah and Catherine are always making conscious efforts to move against the grain. The same could be said for the actresses portraying them, the writers writing them, the directors directing them. Still, unlike their male counterparts, Catherine and Sarah's vulnerabilities are almost exclusively tied to their gender roles. By addressing these issues head on, as we did in that clip, it grants these characters an independence from the stereotypical role, as if to say that they are solely matriarchal Overly, overly sexual or conversely asexual. They're human beings. These clips demonstrate that Sarah Seidel's nature to be too compassionate is a thing that makes Grissom worry about her subjectivity with the victims. And I will start that for you now. Hey. Did you find out anything about work? Um, uh, I'm, I'm here about something else. You, you know how you say we're the victim's last voice? Mm -hmm. I thought it was our job to speak for Kay Shelton. You don't crunch evidence to fit a theory. What if you hear the victim's screams? in the car, at the store. 
You have empathy for her, Sarah. You want someone to pay for what was done to her. That's normal. You want to sleep with me? Did you just say what I think you said? That way when I wake up in a cold sweat under the blanket hearing Kay screams, you can tell me it's not the thing. It raises a few questions. As to whether or not it's a virtue to be entirely detached in your approach to dealing with the victims. That's the norm, that's the idea, but maybe the idea that more women are getting into this field is showing that a little more compassion uh, could be just as useful as being entirely emotionally compartmentalized. Now, Sarah Seidel and Gil Grissom. In the early days of the series, actor and producer William Peterson was adamant that we did not go home with our characters. This was a mystery show, it was not a primetime soap, and the stories were complicated enough without bringing personal lives into it. So we've only been able to kind of touch on personal lives, get a little inkling here and there about what's going on for most of the years. And as it turned out, the audience really wanted it to happen. But once again, we did it a little differently. Um, as far as romance and sex goes on CSI, a little bit goes a long way. Two socially impaired geeks rubbing lab coats up in the hallway. Fan sites go crazy for days. It took eight years for those two to kiss. So far be it for us to deny chemistry. How counterintuitive would that be? If I may paraphrase a very wise Gil Grissom, the only unnatural sex sexual behavior is having none at all. So some things can be learned on this job, and I, I think it's wonderful that the character of Sarah Seidel, who was new and growing and didn't deny her femininity, nor her her talents, and one of her talents, could say, was her compassion. Some things can be learned out of a book, and some can't. If someone doesn't have the stomach or the nerves for the job, then it isn't a good job for them. That's why I got a theater degree. Not a good job for me. So, in the past, we've seen this necessity of female characters in male-dominated worlds in many shows. How, how other way could there be romantic and sexual tension at the end of the workday? But now we can see attractive females becoming so much more than just eye candy or a love interest for the number one male lead. It's not very long ago, I guess, that uh, we were living in a world where a person's gender could be considered a valid reason to have them disqualified from a profession altogether. I know that exists in many places still. Far more needs to be done as uh, women are still marginalized and underrepresented in the workplace. But whether it be fashionable or just plain old controversial, the public can grow accustomed to big ideas for change when they're expressed through fiction. In the fictional world of CSI, the future is now for female scientists, but there's so much farther to go on so many other fronts. And so I leave you with the hopes that our industry continues to be open-minded and forward-thinking for social change. And I thank you very much to the Berlin Technical University and to Mintif. Vielen Dank.